when you start to meditate, make a quick survey of the body. See which of your joints are tense or tight, which of the muscles are tense or tight. Ask yourself, can you consciously relax them? Go down the arms. Start at the back of the neck and go down the back through the legs and the feet. Start at the throat and go down the front of the torso. Or you can start from the hands and the feet and work up. Whichever way of surveying things makes it easiest to relax. And try to relax into an erect posture. Then as you breathe in and breathe out, try to keep that sense of relaxation going. Because sometimes when you're consciously breathing, you tend to tense up certain parts of the body to get the breath in, to push the breath out. And those patterns of tension get unpleasant after a while. They constrict the flow of the breath energy. So. Think of everything being wide open. The energy can flow freely, and you just sit in the middle of this very pleasant energy field. The edges don't have to be too clearly defined. In fact, sometimes you'll notice as you're sitting here. You can sense not only the energy in the body, but the energy immediately around the body, kind of like an energy cocoon. And you have a sense of whether that's flowing freely or not. If it's not, just hold the picture in mind that heals the wounds in your energy field. You can take this as your foundation. It's an interesting foundation because there is a sense that you're floating here. Sometimes the body can get very light, but the quality of the mind is solid, and your awareness can go deep down into the body. Having this as your foundation is very useful because it changes the balance of power in your mind. All too often when greed, aversion, delusion, fear, jealousy, any unpleasant or unskillful emotion comes into the mind, the way you breathe is going to change. In fact, the strength of the emotion is very frequently directly related to the extent to which that particular emotion has taken over your breath, has hijacked your breath energy. Which is why when you try to reason with that particular emotion, it's not going to listen to reason. You can have all your good reasons lined up, and there's still a very strong sense that the power of the emotion is not going to listen. It's not going to be affected. That's because it's got the power of the breath behind it. And one of the most effective ways of changing that balance of power is to be consciously aware of how you're breathing and to consciously smooth through, sort out, untangle any patterns of tension that would come up with the emotion. That way you can reclaim the breath. You can reclaim the power of the breath. So that's on the side of the more alert, wiser, more mature members of your inner committee. So if an emotion like fear or anxiety comes up, the first reaction should be, how is the breath? Now fear is not always an unskillful emotion. I've had many psychotherapists talk to me about this. They're curious that when the Buddha lists the unskillful roots, or the roots of unskillful behavior, there's greed, aversion, delusion or passion, aversion, and delusion, 
Where is the fear? Because for so many of them, fear is the unskillful emotion. Well, it's not necessarily the case. I mean, there are some good things to be afraid of. Be afraid that you're going to do things unskillfully. Be afraid that you're going to act in harmful ways. Be afraid of wasting your time, the time that could be devoted to developing the mind. Those kinds of fears come under what Buddha calls otapa, compunction, fear of wrongdoing. There's also the fear that comes with heedfulness, realizing there are dangers out there and there are dangers in your own mind. And you've got to do something about them. So fear isn't always unskillful. It's when fear gets mixed up with a greed or aversion or delusion. That's when you've got a problem. So first, sort things out. Breathe through any of the patterns of tension that may come up with the fear so you can weaken the sense that the fear is you or yours. It's telling you some deep message from your inner self. You change the way you breathe and you find you can undercut a lot of those misunderstandings. And as you stay with the more refreshing breath, more energizing or nourishing breath, try to get your inner adult involved. There's so much that's said about getting in touch with your inner child. I have a friend who's a psychotherapist who says the only people who have the right to talk about their inner child are pregnant women. We all have inner children, and they're all as stupid as and misinformed as most children. And the younger they are, the less reliable their perception of things. And we carry quite a few of those around. So you want to bring your inner adult in to talk to those people. The inner adult that has a wider perspective, more mature perspective. So you want the inner adult to be backed up by good breath energy, refreshing, nourishing breath energy. And then you can sort out, okay, what kind of fear is this? Where is the skillful element in the fear? Where is the unskillful element? What unreasonable voices do you have to talk to? How can you change your perception of the situation? Remember those three types of fabrication. There's the breath, which is bodily fabrication. Directed thought and evaluation are verbal fabrication. In other words, the way you talk to yourself about an issue. And then there are perceptions and feelings. Feelings here are not so much emotions, they're more feeling tones of pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain. And the perceptions, the images that underlie your thoughts, basic concepts, basic words that you then turn into sentences which become verbal, verbal fabrication. When an emotion comes up, ask yourself, okay, what's fabricating here? What kind of perceptions in particular? Are making it difficult to see the situation clearly. And you'll find many times that these are things that come from way back in your, in your past. And some of the childish members of your committee have held on to these things for so long. And one of the reasons they hold on very effectively is they keep these images in the shadows. They just kind of flit past like subliminal messages that they broadcast on TV. They're there, but you're just barely aware of them. But they have a power because you're just barely aware. They speak to a different part of the mind. So if you find that you can't catch hold of what the perception is, try putting alternative perceptions in and see how the mind reacts. Try skillful perceptions. The mind says, I can't stand this, I can't take this, I'm afraid I'm going to die. Well, are you really going to die from whatever that may be? Can you take it? Can you stand it? You've put up with all kinds of things through life. 
and survived. One of the most powerful elements of fear is your unwillingness to think of what you could do. You don't even want to think of the situation. But if you actually sit down and think about it, you realize you can handle it. You might have to muddle through and things might get difficult, but you can handle it. And as you're thinking this, it's helpful to have the breath coming in and going out really comfortably. So learn how to use the breath. Reclaim your breath. And get in touch with your inner adult. And fortify the inner adult with what you now know about the breathing. That'll change the balance of power in the mind. I said, as I said this morning, the, the terms of the faculties the Buddha talks about, the faculty of conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. The word for faculty, indriya, is related to enda, the king of the gods. In other words, you want these faculties to be dominant in your mind. You want them to have power. They're your inner adults. So you use the breath to put them on top, to keep them in charge. So you're going to have a good perspective on things. And get a sense of which fears are really worth acting on and which ones are just totally irrational. And that way, with a healthier inner committee like this, you find you can function a lot more effectively and cause a lot less suffering for yourself and the people around you.